Shares of Taylor Morrison trading near all-time highs, up more than 40% year-to-date. Joining us this morning, Taylor Morrison CEO Cheryl Palmer is with us. Cheryl, what a day to talk to you. We appreciate it very much. I guess well, when we look Happy at these, here. when we see these sentiment numbers climbing and, and prospective buyer traffic climbing, are you getting any indication those are false tells or that there is some dynamic that argues otherwise? No, Carl, we're really not. You know, we just reported our... Um, first quarter just a few weeks back and talked about the momentum that we saw starting to build really in the fourth quarter. But I think you have to go back to the first quarter last year, Carl, to really understand the story and the amount of demand that exists today. But everyone went to the sidelines with the volatility that we saw last year, obviously compounded by just pure appreciation that happened. So when I look today, we've had much more consistency around rates. Over the last you know, few weeks, we've seen a little bit more volatility, but certainly not at the levels that we saw last year. And then if you look at just the pure demand numbers and the lack of shelter we have in this country today, Carl, you know, over the next 10 years, we need something between 15 and 20 million new, new units. So um, I think we're, we have a good road ahead. So what is we were just talking about, Cheryl, what does the Fed do with that? If one if one of the aims is to I mean, the major aim is to bring down inflation and shelter is what a third of the consumer price index. If there's an inventory problem that's just keeping things high and keeping demand strong, what what gives there? How do they how do they deal with that? Well, I think we've all been listening for the last few days on what the Fed might do this next meeting. And certainly today, I think we believe he's going to have a pause. I mean, right now, when we look at the curve and, you know, the difference in what we're seeing in short and long-term rates is fairly stunning, um, given, you know, the expansion that we're seeing. But I am still a believer that when we continue to see the numbers through the next many weeks, he will pause. I don't know if it's this next meeting, Sarah. Um but I think what we really need is some stability for the consumer to understand where we're at um, as we, I think, as the, you know, the discussion became, we were more likely to see a pause. We really did see the consumer kind of take a deep breath and say, okay, we understand the future is ahead. I'm still a believer by the time we get to the end of the year, rates will settle down from where they are today. I'd love to get your take on, um, on labor. Uh, Goldman had a note this week, the impact of higher rates on construction looks somewhat underwhelming so far. Uh, it's still hard to get workers. They argue that uh, Infrastructure Act is just now beginning to feed into the economy. Are you seeing any relief at all on, on, on the labor front? Um, yeah, not, that, not like we thought we would, Carl, to be candid about it. Um, certainly, as we got into the end of last year, when we saw starts slow down, I would say the front end of the schedule did see some relief, but the pipelines and the backlogs that the trades had has continued to put some pressure on the back end. And now we're seeing starts continue to move up, modestly, but move up. I think the governor, to meet real demand, will be just thinking about the labor environment. The good news is the supply chain has leveled up quite a bit from what we've seen over the last 24 months. And now we need the labor to continue to catch up. Um, I think a lot of good work by the builders to help. And we'll see what happens with commercial activity because that could actually be a benefit to the residential. Yeah.